Hey, Mike. Yo, what's up? Hey, have you heard of Unidragon.com? Yeah, that's where the owl lives. That's where the owl is. That's correct. If you listen to our earlier commercial, Mike is all about the owl. But let me tell you, Unidragon has some brand new puzzles available to add to your collection. I like owls. We have the new Planet Earth and the Sakura images that are available. And of course, we have the Milky Whales two in one. You get two puzzles for the price of one. And remember, these aren't puzzles. These are wooden puzzles. I want them all. Now's the chance for you to grab Planet Earth, the wooden jigsaw puzzle Milky Whales, and all the other new items available at Unidrag. I need them. I need them all. Let's talk about how you can even save money to add to your collection. If you go on and do a purchase order at unidragon.com, if you use our special Tech Time Radio code, which is called Dragon Tech, again, that's Dragon Tech, you can receive 10% off your order. What a great find. These puzzles have puzzles within the puzzles themselves. Isn't that puzzling? That's puzzling. If you want 10% off, use the Tech Time Radio coupon Dragon Tech until June 1st. It's not just a puzzle. It's a wooden puzzle. I want them all. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, how's your inbox doing these days? Were you talking about my email? Yeah. Oh, dude, don't get me started about my email. I hate my email. I get so many freaking emails a day. I just don't even know what to do with them. I sometimes don't even know how I get to my regular work. Well, you know what? 70% of the emails that you receive throughout the day are unimportant. And our focus is constantly disrupted as we spend a total of three to four hours per day in our inbox. You know what? For me, it's a little bit higher than that. Yeah, I feel like I spend eight hours a day on it. But yet our inbox is the most crucial part of our business day workflow. So I got a solution for you, Mike. Tell me. Have you heard of Inmote? No. Well, Inmote gives users control over the inbox by enabling them to maintain focus on their email priorities and increasing productivity. Inmote allows users to select their email priorities from a predefined list to create automated smart filters. Any incoming email that doesn't fit those users selected will be moved to a new folder to be reviewed at a later time. With Inmote, you can have confidence that your emails in your inbox are important and worth reviewing. Cool. That's awesome. Yes. Get back at your schedule. Get back your life. Get back your email. The best place to get it is at Inmote.com. That's I-N-M-O-A-T.com. Again, go visit www.inmoat.com and get organized today. Perfect. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. I'm your host. We got Mike uh, Corday here, you, you David Brown. Cut, you, you were just cutting me off before I was going to bag on your non shorts today. Huh? My non shorts? I, I dressed up again yeah, today. You dressed up nice today. Okay, huh? I know, I know. You know, I know you were well, giving me a hard nice. time, so I just want to get back into it. because it's raining. We got Mike Corday here falling asleep on us, so he just got his second shot for his uh, uh, COVID 19 aspect, right? Is it, did you get the Madrona? I got the Madrona. Or? Madrona. 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 Okay, so oh, my... phonics worked for you, didn't it? <laughs> that's right. <Yeah. laughs> David's on the I'm not ball sh- today. I'm, I'm not sure that was a phonics. But uh, that's <laughs> all right. Here we go. We got, uh, you're watching us from 4 to 5 p.m. We live stream on Facebook. We live stream on YouTube, Twitch TV, and um, we also Facebook. have. And Facebook, that's right. Yeah, so don't forget all, Facebook. All of those are available to you watch at our show. This is a great show because this is our last show from 4 to 5 p.m. Because next week we come back. For and two hours. We have moved to two hours with our partnership <laughs> with KKNW 1150. We will be on the air from 4 to 6 p.m. We are the only two-hour live radio show on the West Coast now. You really? That? For technology. That's correct. Wow. Not, not for overall shows, but oh, specifically okay. in the for technology spe- okay. uh, area. So hopefully you, are, you will get to visit our website. Our website is being worked on right now for the big release also. It's mm-hmm. www.techtimeradio.com. If you go to it right now, it's going to say coming soon, but we have a huge new website that will come on out, so you'll be able to get all of the content there immediately. And any of the sponsors that we do, any of the uh, items that we talk about on the show, we'll have a store where you can go in and directly purchase those. So we're doing a huge refit on the website, huge refit on the overlays. Say under construction. Remember, remember those under construction. You remember those little, old, the, little, little, the guy yeah. with the animation? It didn't have one of those? It doesn't have one of those, but I do remember those. Back in the Netscape deals. Remember when they used oh. to have flying little worlds and yeah. animated? Oh, that was a big absolutely. deal. Absolutely. All right. Well, 
We, <clears throat> we are excited to be here. Again, our show is for the everyday common person. On today's show, we have uh, a guest that will be talking about Facebook, Google, Apple, and other large companies trying to take your Not identity, trying. well, <laughs> taking your identity, your information that you currently uh, have about what purchases you do, about what you do, and essentially then do guided advertising to you. He is about to take it back and have it so that each person can own their data, decide what needs to be shared out, and if they do share it out, uh, can receive compensation for those shares. So we're really excited about that. It will be from my, my Tiki. We, t- we had them here yes. as a sponsor. So yep. we have uh, Mike Adi, who is the founder of MyTiki.com, that will be on here later on the show. And then we have, of course, a very interesting subject today that we're going to be talking about during our Ask the Experts. We're going to talk about hard drives. What happens if your hard drive in your computer, let's say a Surface 4. Like like uh, yours? Like, uh, all of a sudden decides to go out on it. What happens? Do you lose your information? Do you not lose your information? I did not. And we're going to talk about many ways that you well, can back up you that. backed it up. Uh, we have it backed up. We're going to talk about some ways to do that. And we're all going to talk about a way that you can use the cloud services for free to back up your data. So, well, that's going to be a special part that we talk about. But... We're going to start off again, as we do every episode, with our question of the day, our loaded question for Mike, and it is, what book are you most proud of owning? <laughs> Mine. Your book? Yeah. You, you have a book? Yeah. Well, what's your book about, Mike? Uh, I wrote a fantasy novel that got published in 2013. What's it about? Uh, well, it's a fantasy novel. So. Okay. Was, 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 so, fantasy? Well, it, what what it, 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 I, you got a sword. I, you got a, who's your main I, character? A guy named Mark with a big sword. He's got a big sword. Does yeah, he go around and a curse. People? He's on. He's a curse. He is has a, a curse. Oh, yeah. so does he have to break that? He yeah. And does he do it by the end no. of book one? Nope. Nope. So did you write? Why are you asking me about the book? Just, well, that's just the one I'm proud of having. Okay. Well, I, I want to know a little bit more. So oh, it's so, called Threads of Chaos. It's on Amazon. If you thre- want it, yeah. Threads of Chaos. Okay. Yeah. So what? So are you going to make a second book? I actually have written. Several novels, oh, but okay. they haven't been published. Well, they, dude, if the guy is like halfway hanging through, you you need to make sure you, you help him out. Why 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 are you dogging on my stuff here, man? <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm not talking. <laughs> you just were talking about your book, and I, this I, is this is payback for the shorts, isn't it? This is payback for the shorts. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to start out with our top stories in the first five minutes. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right, so story number one. We are going to start out by talking about Sony looking to announce PlayStation <laughs> Plus Video Pass. Before we play the audio, <laughs> we talked about this. How's your feeling about somebody naming uh, something Plus? Uh, we've talked about this so many times. We have. It's just crazy how Every everybody has a Plus now. Everything has a Plus. We're going to have a Plus. That's right. It's, it's going to be our Tech Time Radio hour, Plus. Our second hour is now going to be called Tech Time Radio Plus. So the, and then we'll charge people because everybody, if you got a plus, that means yeah, somehow that you're willing to do yeah, yeah we could do a streaming service. Yeah, and, nine bucks a month. So you're gonna if you want to watch our second hour of the show, you're gonna have to turn it into our yeah, streaming service. Okay. Pay nine bucks a month. And, I, no. My name is Mike Plus. Here's and a if Mike you Plus. Want to talk to me? You have to pay me. Oh, okay, Mike there. Plus. Yeah. How's All it? right. So there we go. We're gonna start with our story. Let's get to the audio. Plus, plus, plus. If you're looking for more TV and movie content to watch on your gaming system, Sony might just have the answer for you with what appears to be their PlayStation Plus Video Pass. This unannounced streaming service was first spotted by Video Games Chronicle, posted on Sony's PlayStation Poland website. The now-removed banner read, quote, a new benefit available for a limited time on PlayStation Plus. PS Plus Video Pass is a trial service active April 22nd, 2021 through April 22nd, 2022. The subscription benefit is available to PS Plus users in Poland. In Poland. Yeah, you know what's going to happen What's in a that? couple of years. What's that? It's going to be PS plus plus two plus five or plus, so what, what's, plus what's star. Or, so Disney Plus came out with the kind of first, right? Disney Plus. I don't yeah. know. Did Disney Plus come yeah. out? Yeah. yeah. So I, I just don't understand why Netflix isn't Netflix Plus. It's coming. Is it going to come? Are they going to yeah. have the Netflix, yeah, the nine dollar a month deal, and now you're going to want to pay for fourteen dollars? Netflix, Netflix is it? Plus. Ne- and then, Netflix Plus. You and then get it'll the, be uh, yeah. Yeah. Because you got Peacock Paramount Plus. Yeah. You got yeah. They got the Peacock Network. So it's, yep. yeah, it's going to be Peacock Plus. All right. Here we go. So Sony rolled this out. Essentially, they didn't tell anybody, but all of a sudden, the websites on <laughs> Poland were able to access content <laughs> to download. Okay. All right. So when we reached out, Tech Time Radio reached out to ask them if they are planning to do that. They essentially gave Poland access 
to a year's worth of content for free. Why? On the PlayStation Plus so that they could test this. Poland has a lot of restrictions compared to Netflix oh, and okay. other areas uh, specific with copyrights of what they can watch and what they can't watch. And since the Sony Plus only has like 15 titles in their thing, so it's not it's not very so it's not very plusy. It's not very plusy <laughs> at this time. They want them to kind of be the trial to see if if they enjoy watching their services instead of playing games. So I don't know. I don't have a yeah. PlayStation, yeah, so I, I don't Xbox, either. So. But I don't use. Well, never mind. You don't. All right, here we go. Story number two: <laughs> Whole Foods will now let customers pay for groceries with the scan of your palm, and we have the news yeah. right here. From the Seattle Capitol Hill store. Amazon said it is rolling out biometric technology at its Whole Foods stores around Seattle starting on Wednesday, letting shoppers pay for items with a scan of their palm. The move shows how Amazon is bringing some of the technology already in use for the grocery chain it acquired in 2017. The system, called Amazon One, lets customers associate a credit card with their palm print. It offers a contactless alternative to cash and card payments. All right, here we go. Amazon One. They didn't call it Plus. The Amazon like, Plus. No, Amazon <laughs> One has come on out. So the idea of this is that you go into the store and you put in your credit card information or your checking account or direct ACH deposit. Yeah, and you... And, and instead of having... They, they previously had a thumbprint, right? So they've already had that in the store yeah, themselves. This is, this is they've also the done Amazon a pin. Go thing. Yep, I, they've, always, they've done a pin, and now instead of doing that specifically... They're trying to compete with Apple because all of your Apple devices, you have to have a touch, like when you try to unlock your phone, right? You have to have your fingerprint there. And this is to take the ability away from you of having to touch something. You essentially scan your whole hand over that, and it looks at all five of your digits in your hand for fingerprints and then looks at the stress lines, I guess, that they have in the middle of your palm Mm -hmm. to verify the user itself. Which I think don't those things change? I think they do. So Which, I think specifically they look for the fingerprints and they're looking at that high scanning resolution yeah. of your hands. So what do you think of that, Mike? Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm ambivalent. Yeah, I could kind of care less. Yeah, I mean, I right, so I yeah, so this is all stuff that when you know this is all that stuff when I was a kid and we were watching Buck Rogers and all that stuff. We we're like, oh, that sounds cool. And now that it's happening, it's like, meh. It's like no big deal, yeah. right? It's like, like okay. Yeah, like some, somebody's inventing transporter technology. Where yeah. you go from saying, yeah. like, yeah, I guess what Next yeah, Generation okay. was doing that 20 years ago. Yeah. No big deal. It's Man. okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And story number three. It's we don't have it. audio for this, but <laughs> we do have the Olympic Virtual Series gaming event launched by the IOC. So the Olympics. The Olympics you is- You can now win a gold medal if, and this comes out of Switzerland, if you compete in competitive sports this upcoming Olympic time. So, essentially, the Olympic Virtual Series will include five sports, a baseball game, a cycling game, auto racing, these are all video rowing, games, right? and sailing games. And these will run from May 13th to June 23rd. The Tokyo Olympics will open on July 23rd, and they will already have winners that would have won awards. Now, they don't win a gold medal yet. They haven't said what they win. <laughs> Wouldn't this be horrible? If you always thought of... Carl Lewis, right? There was this great athlete. He, he's, he I, did I tons they and tons. They should call it the Olympics Plus. The Olympics, they should be able to the Olympics Plus. So they, yeah. So essentially, these are kids going to be sitting down. They don't know what they're going to do yet. So if they're going to have them actually show up and then, then participate. And then they throw them into a particular game and see how they do. And- I, I Well, no, it's going to be based upon specific games they have. So the main game that they have here is kind of an older version. They have Gran Turismo. It's not even like the best yeah, racing uh, the, game. This is This is stuff that... You know the Halo tournaments and all these other things that are going on all over the world. Well, they so they want to they reach just... out to a younger audience, and they believe that enabling mobilized virtual sports and esports gaming should also be a part is, of the. Olympics. Is that the market for for these boring games? So, uh, do, do, what happens? So, do you go to the Olympic? So, do you go to the Olympics? I I was at the 2008 Beijing China Olympics, and I was very involved with that. We did internet setups for people. Mm-hmm. We did tons of technology work. Uh, for that Olympic event itself. And I'm thinking, because I got to visit the uh, United States um, where the, all the athletes hanged out and, and everything, what happens if you're that computer nerd guy and you're trying to h- hang out in the United States pavilion and instead of being there, you got some guy over here, Greg Luganis, for diving, you got this star athlete for something else, and you got your like headset on and you're the nerd kid there saying, I'm here to compete in I'm the, here to compete in, 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 in the virtual version the virtual of the Virtual version of your life. Yeah. 
It'd be like, oh, we trained months and months and months, and you sit yeah. down with the keyboard. There okay, you go. well, there you go. You know what? Hope the internet service is good. The Olympic, uh, yeah, yeah or, or, Olympics uh, Plus. Olympics Plus Plus. <laughs> there you go. Well, Mike and I need to have some whiskey during this commercial break. When we I come need on a back, lot of whiskey. You need some whiskey. We will be talking about our whiskey, and we have our interview with Mike Audi from Tiki. So we look forward to seeing you after this commercial break. I'm Nathan Mum, Mike Day, and David Brown. Did you know that up to 12 to 15 percent of Americans grind their teeth at night while they sleep? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's called bruxism. I used to work at a sleep lab, and we used to we used to measure that, and it leads to a lot of uh, problems like headaches and destroys your teeth. It wears down the enamel, and it's just very hard on your your mouth. So every once in a while, I'll wake up, my jaw will hurt. Do you think I'm grinding my teeth at night? Yep. Well, so how do you go about protecting this then? Uh, the number one recommended way of protecting yourself from teeth grinding is what's called a night guard, which is a custom fitted prosthetic that you put inside your mouth. It usually runs, you know, hundreds of dollars, but I know our sponsor, Smile Brilliant, can get you custom fitted night guards for as little as $45 a piece. So if you go to smilebrilliant.com and use Tech Time radio at checkout you can receive 20 percent off your complete order so visit smilebrilliant.com and use the tech time radio at checkout code hey mike yeah what's going on have you heard about 180 consulting no i love these guys you know how much i avoid working with copy vendors right uh, actually i get to hear about it all the time not anymore because guess what the guys at 180 consulting took over the entire process they assessed our needs work directly with the vendors on my behalf and helped us understand our option. No sales fluff, just good information so we can make the right decision. Well, that sounds good. How do they get paid? Their only compensation comes from a small share of the cost savings they create. They work for us and it's a win-win. You know, that sounds like a no-brainer. There's two ways to reach them. You can get them at info at 180-consulting.com or visit them online at www.180-consulting.com. www.180-consulting.com. Thank you, Mike. 180-consulting.com. Hi, I'm Bernadette Pager, host of An Informed Life Radio. In an age when the term misinformation is used to silence criticism and debate about COVID-19, vaccines, and more, we're bringing you doctors, lawyers, and scientists to discuss the missing information about your health and medical freedom. An Informed Life Radio airs right here on KKNW every Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. We're starting a real health revolution, one conversation at a time. Join us. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio, and then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. We got Mike Roday here, and we have our Bailey's Hayden Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 80 proof, $45 per bottle. It's got golden brown color. It's got the charred <laughs> oak flavor. Uh, That's sweet really important. Brown sugar. Touch of black pepper and dried fruit to round it out. A pleasant, lingering charcoal oak finish with a touch of a dried fruit. That's their opinion. <laughs> What's your opinion of it so far? Um, <laughs> what's that? You got you, you to say what your face looks like. It's not really. It's not really that good. It's not really that good. It's, it's forty five dollars per bottle. In fact, you know, 
I'm it, getting a little down on this Kentucky stuff. This Kentucky <laughs> stuff. Well, you know what? I our, our supplier supplies it, and we just get what hey, they, hey taken yeah, care that's of. Fine. That's right. All right. Okay. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, yes, the whiskey is going to be an interesting. We'll see if that's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we already know it. Is. Well, you could, well yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could change your mind. You never know, right? All right. So at this time, we got our drinks out of the way, and we have our show packed with lots of information. We're going to bring up our next segment. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. All right. We're really excited to have Mike Audi here. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. It's always a pleasure to have someone passionate about technology on the show, and you are currently absolutely passionate about data. So explain to us a little bit, um, before we get into Tiki, explain to me a little bit about your patents that you have taken care of. So I did a little bit of research on you, and you have a couple patents that you filed for. So explain those to me. How'd that process go? Sure. I've got yeah, a handful of patents and a whole bunch more in flight. Okay. Um, my background comes out of data, IoT, robotics, that type of stuff. And so I've spent uh, most of my life building either systems that create data or use data to drive user interaction. So most of my patents are on how do you use data to ideally benefit users' lives. That's uh, most of what we, most of what I do. That's what you do. So explain Tiki to us. All right, so we had you guys on as a couple of ads that we did for you guys. We're really excited about it. Uh, this the ad was make sure to it was a bright torch. So we talked That's about right. a bright torch being there. Um, really important, right? People have data. All these large companies are taking in the information that we have. I mean, I talk about something on my phone, and then 30 minutes later, I'm getting 17 different ads for uh, different items that I have available. Explain to us what your goal is to do at with the Tiki app and and bring that back to the consumer. Yeah, it's kind of simple, right? Everybody says that we as users, we own our own data. It's kind of, you know, the standard saying that companies are putting out there, but we have no rights to it, right? If you own your car, you can see where your car is parked, you decide who can use it. And if it's sold, you get paid for it. But we have none of those rights as users when it comes to our data, right? Like you have no idea what companies are collecting on you. If you were to try and request it through like a GDPR request, they just send you a whole bunch of, you know, gigs and gigs of HTML files. You can't decide how it's used, right? Like it's all buried inside privacy policies and under like confusing settings. You know, I got 80 apps on my phone. It's impossible to figure out which ones are collecting what and how to control it. And then they're selling it and we're not getting our cut of it. It's just very unfair. Um, so with Tiki, we set out to build a solution, right? Put the users in control, allow people to make their own choices around their data. It, like data doesn't have to be complicated. Users can easily make choices if they're presented around the right information at the right point in time. All right. So, so let's think of this, right? So a bunch of companies out there, if you got, and, and, and I, I saw another interview that you did, um, essentially he talked about, Mike did about a dollar for all the data you got from each of these companies, let's say you did that even at a month's time frame, right? Mm-hmm. Just think of that. You got Google, you got Apple, you got all these <clears> companies. There could be tons of money that would be available for it. And the idea that you guys are trying to monetize that to give back to the uh, consumer itself, tell me about how that application works. Sure. And you're right. Um, you know, let's take in the United States, there's 30 million small to medium sized businesses, roughly. And you could easily find 10,000 of them that would pay $1 for your data, right? So your data is worth a lot of money to a lot of places, um, or actually rather it's worth a little bit of money to a lot of people. Um, and so that's how the entire market kind of works today, right? Your data is out there and companies are using it, but you as a user have no say. So what we're trying to do is allow users to have a say so they can decide, yeah, I'm comfortable with this company using this type of my data for this use case. And the way we do it is we actually on your phone, uh, we call it at the edge. We actually take care of all the anonymization there. So you're, we never have a single piece of personally identifiable information ever in our cloud. Um, it all happens on your phone. And then we're building a knowledge graph that companies query, search, look for. They build their analytics on top of. It's all about the, really the decentralization of data and making it easy for both users and companies to interact. Like, why do we have all these middlemen doing all these weird, creepy things with our data? Okay, so let me ask you. So I know that you guys are working on the phone. Is there an idea to also work on the client browser itself also and the OS itself? So let's say I have a Mac PC or an Intel-based PC with Windows on it. Is there a way to actually even put that all the way into the desktop? Yeah, so the really cool thing is 
we use we use comp- we use all the publicly available APIs. So you you just need to link the accounts you want to the Tiki app on your phone one time, and that can be a a web client that can be a your browser that can be a mac app it can be a windows app right so you actually can monitor and manage and control your data from your windows applications by the tiki app on your phone perfect perfect all right so are, is there concerns that you're doing this now that the other large companies will either try to come on in and compete with it i know that there's like amazon has their shopper panel where essentially they're trying to collect information and, and given I think it's like 10 bucks back a month type of deal if you fill out some surveys and, and submit receipts to them. Is there concerns that some of these larger companies will try to cut you guys off at the knees or, 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 or what, what's, what's your biggest concern with your uh, launch of your app? Can we actually get enough people to participate and can we present data in a way that users actually understand it and can make choices, right? The hardest problem that we're working to solve is to build a truly user first, a user centric application that is open, transparent, and trusted. Um, So it's just difficult to present that information in an easy to use way. So we've taken a very public approach to it. We have hundreds of users on our public discord server, just DMing us feature requests and changes and tweaks. And we're just slowly every day pushing out new features, testing them with users, trying to figure out how to make it easy to understand this mess that is data that is completely agnostic across the channels. So that's that's the challenge that we're trying to tackle. Um, will the big guys move into this space? I'm sure they will. Um, but honestly, if you build something that is trusted and for the users, good things will happen. Right? Right. We saw this with Roku, right? Long ago, right? Roku started out just like, hey, how do we make like the streaming channel mess just really easy for people? Yep. And it evolved into an amazing company and they get a little piece of everything we stream through Roku yeah. nowadays. Yep. Tron. Yep. Tron. Was, was that? Tron. Mm-hmm. Another Tron? Yeah. He fights for the users. He's fight for the users. <laughs> there you go. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> so let me tell, so we got a large audience that listens to our show. How could they help you Get this to market so that you can go to market first. Be ahead of the big boys because we don't like fa- – I mean, Mike doesn't like Facebook at all. Um, he always yeah. dogs on oh, Facebook. And, and we don't necessarily like Amazon even though I purchased too much stuff from them. And uh, <laughs> we do like Microsoft though. I guess we're okay with Microsoft. You, well, you worked for I them. I worked for them for 10 years. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> um, so how can we help you out and, and, and what would our users be best to do to engage and, and help you bring this to product? Sure. The first thing – go to mytiki.com and sign up to join our wait list, right? The more users we have, the more powerful we are collectively, right? Like no one, if it just took the three of us on this call, our data, no one would care, right? Like nobody cares about the three of us, right? We start adding 10,000, 100,000 people to it. It becomes very meaningful and allows, it opens doors into expanded control and options that you as users can actually get. Perfect. So the first thing you can do, sign up. If you're really passionate about helping and want to get involved, join us on either uh, Signal, Telegram, or Discord. You can DM me, you can chat with me, you can chat with our whole team and talk to us about like, and give us real feedback, right? Like we're constantly publishing Things that no company would ever publish, right? Like we put everything out there, 100% transparency. We tell people how we're raising money, from who, what are we doing, what are we building? We publish app screenshots long before we're ever going to build them. It's just all out there in the open. Perfect. Hmm. Perfect. All right. So mytiki.com, you guys need to go and sign it up so that we can get more people because the more people that sign up, the more power we have to be able to go to them and say, guess what? You want this information. Yeah, you don't want the three of ours information, but if you want 100,000 people's information, 200,000 people's information, um, then we're more taken care of. Now, you also have the last thing to talk about. You guys, the data that you collect on me, on Mike, on yourself, you guys categorize it in a way that doesn't actually show the person itself, right? So do you want to explain that just real briefly here? Sure. Yeah. It's everything we do is a hundred percent anonymized. And the way we do that is it's all on your phone. So we don't actually send any personally identifiable information ever to our cloud, no matter what it is, right? We use a pretty unique type of blockchain um, to actually synchronize all the tokens and payments for users all over the world. And we basically are running models at the edge. So traditionally you send data to a company where they then run their analytical model on it. We actually move the model to your phone and we run that to calculate the anonymous insight. We then 
combine those anonymous insights into what's called a knowledge graph that is backed by anonymous IDs of who deserves payment for what. And then that's what companies are allowed to access. So your data is super safe. It's encrypted on your phone. It's all end to end encrypted for anything we do track. And we never, ever, ever as a company track anything that's personally identifiable. All right. So on our Twitch team, somebody just asked, it says, it sounds like your cloud native solution. Are you platform agnostic? So this was something that our Twitch uh, user McSherry just asked us. So whether that's a gal or girl or a guy, or, uh, McSherry sounds like a gal, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. I hope so. Um, so let's answer that question. <laughs> Sounds like a cloud native solution. Are you platform agnostic? We are platform agnostic. Okay. And we are actually mobile native is how I'd put it. Um, since 99% of everything we do is actually done on your phone, mobile and locally. And that's to ensure the absolute maximum amount of privacy and security, right? The old saying is, if you don't think you've been hacked, you've been hacked, yep. right? So if you don't put personal identifiable information in the cloud, you can't accidentally get hacked. You can't leak it, nothing. So we don't have access to your information. So Perfect. we're actually not cloud native. We're mobile native is how I'd put it. Mobile native. Perfect. All right. McSherry, it's mobile native. That's the new term right there. All right. Well, Mike, we really appreciate you. Hopefully you can enjoy a little whiskey on the side after the uh, uh, show. When we go to commercial break, we're going to enjoy some There's whiskey another. too. Uh, so there's another question uh, here. I'm going to be able to trust. Hang on here. Service um, legit. Am I going to be able to trust with our data and stick uh, it to the man? <laughs> oh, so <laughs> super line, <laughs> super line here on uh, Twitch. He's a little bit aggressive here. So is it, can he stick it to the man? We can absolutely stick it to the man. That's, uh, right. that's a big part of it. <laughs> that's a big part. That's Mike's personal goal. Isn't that kind of one of your goals? I or, love sticking it to the man. or the per, uh, that's right. I, 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 <laughs> you were I looking at me. Stuff. Well, I, I was talking to Mike on the on yeah. there. I was gonna, uh, you too, Mike. All right, okay. Yeah, I want to stick it to the man. <laughs> okay, Mike Audi. Thank you very much from mytiki.com. Uh, we really appreciate it. again. Everybody, go sign up at mytiki.com, and we are going to head out to a commercial break. When we come on back, we have our Ask the Expert segment where we're going to be talking about Thanks, data. Mike. Uh, that you can have backed up and how do you back up your data and some recommendations to make sure your data is always safe on your computer because I had a computer crash. All right, we'll talk to you guys after this commercial break. Thank you. Warning, this podcast is inappropriate, dumb, and should not be listened to. Oral discretion is advised. Fat Tango presents a monthly scripted comedy show. Each episode is a self-contained short story that showcases the sick, twisted senses of humor of its creators. Episodes range from podcast parodies to supernatural encounters and cartoonish ridiculousness. I do this in the name of science. Jeff, which kid took the gummy bears? Can you name a famous trombone player? How do you know my name? I'm Santa that was the best uh, I've ever seen! Thanks, bro. Every episode is a different story with different people, played by different actors, sometimes. I know I've told you this before, but I don't like you. Is this because we didn't want to get a dog? Pow! We got a dog! Wham! Let's get a dog! Toledo! You're disrespecting painting, you can Can you believe he said that? No, man. Can't change my mind on this. I wish for a bigger Boy, if I was listening to this on some other podcast that was running a trailer for it, I would sure go listen to it. You know what? Split second decision. All of it's real. Yes, I would murder Santa Claus. Check us out wherever you listen to podcasts. New episodes release first Monday of every month. Fat Tango is also launching its podcast network this month. So go check it out on their website at FatTangoProductions.com and follow them on social media at Fat Tango Podcast on Twitter and at Fat Tango Productions on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you there. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, we got a new sponsor here, and they're called The Art of Manliness. Oh, yeah? Yeah, have you heard of them? I've heard of these folks. Yeah, I've I've been on their website several times. You've been on their website? Yeah, they talk about everything, man. You know, like how to wear a porch coat with jeans or how to give yourself a buzz cut or uh, style tips for men. Really? Well, guess yeah. what? I have what? not heard of them until now, and now I'm excited because you know what? You're not uh, a man. Well, I am a man. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a manly yep. man. All right, so this is really the show for manly men. Are you sick and tired of waiting through two hours of fluff in order to get a few good takeaways? Have you listened to podcasts that make you just go, huh? 
Tune into the Art of Manliness podcast, where you can gleam and distill the very best insights from the world's experts in self-improvement, philosophy, and practical skills, history, and a lot more. And do it all under an hour. Without all the eye-rolling filler, you can walk away from every episode, Art of Manliness podcast, with actionable insights you can start implementing today to improve your life. You can listen to them on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your other podcast players. What does platform agnostic mean? Platform agnostic means that essentially you're developing a platform that doesn't necessarily work on Google or on Apple, but can be used across all so phones. It's, some, it's something that can be used everywhere. It can be used everywhere. So it can be used on your PC. It can be used. Um, and so they're specifically spending a lot of time. Mike, for those that are just catching back, we had our guest, Mike Audi from uh, uh, mytiki.com My um, on the show on our last segment. And he spoke about taking data back. He spoke about making it so that companies have to pay for your personal data. And this is legit. A lot of companies are working on it. I had somebody ask me in the Twitch, is this really a legit company? Yes, it is a legit company. The problem is with these companies, if they don't get enough people to sign up for it, the company's not going to pay the money. They're going to say, forget you. You only have 10,000 people in your guys' right. ecosystem. That's it's like not worth when I me. Call, when I call up to uh, complain about something to Microsoft, they could give a crap. Correct. But if you're a larger company and you have any tons of different stuff in there, then it's a completely different level. So Correct. it's really all about the attrition of users signing up on that list right now so that they can go to the companies and say, hey, if you want this information, we're creating an app to block it so that you can't get this information anymore. And if you do, you're going to have to pay for X amount. And they're going to, I'm sure, take a percentage, probably 10% or something. They have all their documents available. Mike is a crazy guy, great guy, and he's got lots of great ideas on technology. So- Speaking of technology, we're going to move into our next sec segment that we call the, Ask the Experts. Ask the Experts. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. <laughs> I missed it, did that. Okay. I was supposed to not yeah, say the name. Not say. And David was ready to go on that, so that was my fault, David. I am so sorry. We're, we're trying. Yeah, we're getting that, ready for our two hour salute. show. You That's right. That, oh, I got, got, the got, the, I, I got the salute. All right. So let's talk about backups. So essentially, this last week, I have a surface and my hard drive decided to go out. Now, I am not a big lover of the solid state drives. The SSD drives, very quick, very fast. When they go bad, guess what? They go bad they and go it's bad. done. It's done. There's nothing to do about it. But the old drives, remember the old drives? They'd have like, and start sound like a wind up uh, fan mm -hmm. belt going bad and you hear it and then you hear click, 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 yes, click, I've click. I've been through many of those. Well, with those hard drives, if you grabbed them in time, you could normally save the data. You could get them backed up. You could even then rebuild those based on the logic boards in, in different areas where you could actually put the mechanics back into it. When you have a solid-state drive and it goes bad, guess what? You are in bad shape. And so my Surface decided in the middle of uh, doing some video editing, some downloading and stuff, that it was going to go bad. And I got my little Surface uh, screen, which is their their screen of death is the Windows logo. It's a white Windows logo. White Windows logo? Yeah, so it's uh, great. So I see this, I'm like, oh, okay, great. It's got a it's Windows It's not the blue screen of death. It's not a blue screen of death. I get that all the time. You on, get a blue screen of death? Yeah, on, I get blue screens all the time. On, on which one? On on my Surface. On your Surface? And and my uh, laptop. We need even make sure that uh, we look at your Surface. Get they're, all, drivers. they're all those dumb little... The IRVC dumb little, stuff. Yeah. Video. yeah. So essentially, let's talk about backup. So you can do two things to back up your data, right? You can either do uh, a cloud solution or a local solution. We're going to talk about a couple different ways. Like now, the number drive. one, what's that? Like a ghost drive? Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about backing up locally. Yep. Okay. So if I have a, a hard drive that's available in my office, at my home, that I can back up to. And then we're going to talk about uh, the cloud as an option itself. Now, let's talk about the one thing you should never back up to. You know your USB cards that you get? Sure. Those things go dead 50% of the time after two years you own them. So I know people that have stored pictures and photos and high-end stuff on these flash drives. Whatever you do for any backup utility, you better be backing it up to at least a physical hard drive if you're going to be backing up to it or the cloud. Do not be backing up your data to those USB drives. Don't be doing it to your micro SD cards that kind of fit in your phone, those little smaller devices that are available all of that is portable read and write data that goes bad. We talked about this with Tesla in their That's read and right. write stuff. That's this right. is why Tesla had to replace all of their cars upgrades because after a while, the read and write goes out on those devices. Mm -hmm. Don't be backing that up. <laughs> Let's talk about what you can back up to. With Windows 10, 
You can use an opportunity called file history to do backup. The key about a backup is, is you need to have not one backup drive. You need to have two. All right. So, so it gets a little expensive. Here, but yeah, this is this happened is what happens. Redundancy. Yeah, your redundancy. What happens if your first hard drive backup no longer works? Then, then you have nothing. Then you're screwed. So it's always in the in the things of being safe to have something. If you say you have one of something, you should always have two. Well, right. I know this. I have a story that goes with when I was first writing that book that I was talking about earlier. What was that? Is that I, I wrote a bunch of it and my hard drive crashed. Oh, your hard drive and crashed. So I lost all of it. So when I rewrote it, I backed that thing up all over the place. I put it on CDs and three and a quarter drive. I remember this. Th- so those are some of the best things. You know those CDs? CDs were a great uh, medium. Now, if you've had a CD backup and you've had it for 10 years, CDs do gradually lose degrade their integrity. So they yeah, they will degrade. So you can't keep them. But you should always have two drives. Now, if you have a Windows 10 PC, um, you can use Windows 10 Backup. It's built in, absolutely free. All you got to do is plug in a drive, and it will back up your files. If you have a Windows 7 PC, then you're out of compliance, and you better freaking get it upgraded. You need to get what, Windows 10. You need to get Windows 10. <laughs> but if you do, there's an image backup that you can use, all available on local machines. Now, the Windows Backup is not as easy to use as the Mac. Mac has Time Machine. And Time Machine is by far the best application Mac has ever came up with. Well, no, they got a lot of great stuff. But it yeah, is be the careful best. What you say there. I was going to say, <laughs> but it's the best backup utility. Because if you don't have it plugged in, so Time Machine, you have two portable hard drives on your machine. Mm-hmm. You set up Time Machine, and then you plug in those drives once a week. And it will, on the idle time, overnight, back up the information, have it all ready available for you. And then you unplug a drive, you plug another drive into it. You do one on Monday, you do one on Friday, and then you have two drives backed up. Worst case scenarios, you have to go back to seven days of data, which normally isn't that big of a deal. Now, let's talk about the cloud. Cloud's a great utility to back up. And a lot of these companies that have cloud services, they have redundant services in Colorado, in the East Coast, in the West Coast. So essentially, when you use a cloud service to back up your information, it normally goes to a local server. And then that local server is replicated at least twice, if not three times, to other cloud servers available within the industry itself. So you can do cloud backup. There's a couple tools to do that. Now, let's talk about, um, there's a company called Backblaze. Again, we're not getting paid by any of these companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, Backblaze is a well-known online backup service. Um, Their competitors are Carbonite. You may have heard of Carbonite Backup. Um, and there's also one called Mosey Home. So Mosey Home's kind of the cheaper, a little bit on the, the lower end. Essentially, you can have for $5 a month, most of these companies, some up to $10 a month, you can have all your data backed up to the cloud at a continuous basis. So essentially, I load the service. I pay 10 bucks a month. And people say, well, gee, 10 bucks a month is a lot. I don't know if it's a lot when your data that spends much? more. It's it's five dollars. Their starting plans at five dollars, and there's plans that go all the way to ten dollars a pop for this a month. And when you look at that, that's one hundred twenty dollars a year. That's one hundred twenty dollars a year. Your data is your data worth that much money? How much time does it take if you have to I, recreate I know, that? I know your book. How many hours did you have to redo? I'm, yeah, that's it's worth more than that. I got I got paid a lot more money for having the book published than than you would than I would have had to recovering it. So. Correct. So. Absolutely worth the time and effort to use a cloud service to back it up. Now, there are some conspiracy theory people that are going to say, well, now this person has my data and it's in the cloud. Anybody can uh, get into my data and I could have it be corrupted or I could have it steal. Functional paranoia. Yeah. You know what? So that's great. You know what? If your data is that awesome that I, as a hacker, am going to go into a cloud service like Carbonite and all these places (laughs) and decide to break in (laughs) to steal your data, Mike Gorday, to write your book, because I'm going to publish that book instead of you. Uh, If I'm going to spend that much time, guess what? That that You you are living in a la-la land because there's not not worth that time and effort to do that. That's not entirely true, but I get it. Well- I, I've had people steal my stuff and repost them as themselves. Oh, have they? Yeah. Okay, but, uh, but are you? Are you? Did you? Did they get that from the Carbonite though? Did they no. get hacking? No, okay, I didn't think so. No. no. So okay. All right. Now, pros and cons. Online backup again uh, protects your data if your hard drive is lost. Natural disasters. A con is the internet providers can sometimes limit your backup data. So if you have Comcast, 
I know we used to do this all the time. I got Comcast. Okay, so there's something. So we used to have we have the unlimited that? data now because it just was so a problem. But <clears throat> my poor wife would have her stuff back up all the time, and we would literally just eat through eat, data. Eat through the data. So yeah. you got to make sure you're on a cloud service that allows you, or an internet service provider that allows you to upload and to download without you having to worry about having that area. Now we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come on back, I'm going to tell you a specific way to use a free service in the cloud to back up all your data for free. Then we're going to have Mike's mesmerizing moment and our pick of the day. So we'll see you right after this commercial break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Well, Seattle, how would you like to have immediate and easy access to your live EKG and heart rate data? Your data right at your fingertips and with no need to hook up wires and leads or be strapped to a machine at the doctor's office. The new Pulse device from Vivomi continuously tracks your EKG and displays this data on your mobile phone. Have you ever wondered how your EKG and heart rate behaves when you're exercising at the gym, navigating the stressful demands of the workday, or just getting the kids ready for school or relaxing at home? The Pulse is a different kind of wearable, and you can experience this difference by going to www.vivomi.com and ordering your device today. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm Nathan Mum, Microday, and we're coming on back with our main story, Ask the Expert, and we're going to talk to you about a way to back up. Now, I'm looking at our Twitch feed. It's going off the handle here. Somebody said that they're just ordering some more Story Coffee. Story Coffee is the best, isn't it? It is. It really is the best. I've, I, you know, I had somebody try it. And they said they didn't like it. And I said, oh, I can't. Did you like smack them in the face? I said, I can't have you as a friend anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like by far the best coffee I've ever I had. I unfriend you on my, That's I'm right. going to unfriend you on Facebook. That's right. Okay. So let's talk about a free way to back up your data. Now, Google has a very nice alternative. And then uh, Mick Sherry uh, commented about that on our Twitch feed also. And we're going to talk about OneDrive. So OneDrive is a product by Microsoft, absolutely available for free. Okay. Now, they have a free service that gives you five gigs Five gigabytes of data to back up. That's a lot of data. That's a lot of data. That's a lot of data. If you have more than five gigs of, of data, then you can go to their 100 gigabyte plan for $199 a month. All right? Wow. So that's not $5 a month. That's $199 for 100 gig. And guess what you can do with OneDrive? I know I got a friend. His name's uh, Mark. But then they got my data. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Mark, Mark and I have talked about this many times before. Uh, we worked at Blue Zebra together for technology backup. And we both have the same thing. We have... The personal version of OneDrive. Mm -hmm. We have it configured so that it can back up. So all you got to do is you have to go to OneDrive.com, go Google it, go Bing it, whatever you want to do. Go and look for the application to load the client for your desktop because you need it, of course, for your desktop. Whether you have a laptop or a desktop, it considers the desktop client the same. Download the application itself. Once you download the application, it's going to put a little white cloud on the bottom right-hand corner of your taskbar, little... White cloud. When you see that it's white right cloud, there. yeah. When you see that right cloud, all you need to do is click on the settings. So you click on that, click on settings, and then go and click on the button backup. Let's see. All right, you're gonna. I'm gonna do, do it. Okay, gonna, do, it right do it right now. Right now. Okay, so then click on the backup, and when it comes on up in the subfolder backup, so replay this again if you need to. Make sure you have this again. Load OneDrive for free. Go and Google it on Microsoft's download. Load the client. There, there it is. Backup. Okay. Go, go, go and click on backup. Say manage backup. There's a little button there that says manage backup. That's you see that? Right. It's right there. Okay. And then after you click on that button, it says which folders do you want synchronized across all your Microsoft platforms? You can back up your desktop, documents, and pictures. And as mm -hmm. long as you use everything on documents, 
desktop, or your pictures. That's where you got to keep those in those areas. It doesn't do video files. It doesn't do music files. But if you create a music folder on your desktop or your documents folder and have all your music in there, guess what? You can back that up too. All right. The only thing it does not do is OSTs or PSTs, which are essentially your mail file information, yeah. if you have that. So they don't won't back that up. And there are some concerns personally about having that information because those are very easy to break into. But all your data can be backed up for free. You don't have to worry about a thing, and it's all available for you at your Ooh, fingertips. It's all right. Easy. So that's your Nathan Nugget of the day, too. You like that? You <clears> that, like that? That's very good. All right. Speaking I of that. I probably shouldn't have killed that glass of whiskey. <laughs> oh, the, 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 our whiskey. We came on back. We have our Bailey's Hayden's. Bourbon whiskey, $45 a bottle. It's not going to get a thumbs up. I'm feeling all. a little woozy. Are you feeling a little woozy? Yeah. Do you like it? Do you like the whiskey? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're going to go right now to Mike's mesmerizing moment. This is Mike's mesmerizing moment. Presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. Yeah, we're we're talking earlier with uh, Mike from My Tiki, and they're, we're talking about <clears throat> how this uh, – process works so it essentially he's encrypting your data right yep and one of the things that that is the problem with, that he spoke to is that we need to get as many people involved in this as we can yep and that's true democracy right there true democracy is mob rule <laughs> is mob rule is okay. mob rule okay that makes sense right that's true democracy because that's everybody doing something because they don't like to do it anymore so uh part of this problem with technology is that we people like me don't understand what's going on behind the scenes so it doesn't make any sense to me why I would want to sign up to one of these things okay. until somebody explains to me what what Facebook is doing that makes sense you know so uh really it's about educating everybody and trying to get them to understand here's what we're doing here's why we're doing it and here's where it affects you as soon as we can make it a f- understand how it affects me as yep. a person, then then I can make a decision about whether or not I'm going to get on board, Okay, which I have. All right. And I, everybody should too. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go and take a commercial break. When we come on back, we'll have our whiskey pick of the day. Hey, honey, did you hear what I heard? Hmm, what's that, babe? I heard Mike over there at Tech Time Radio. He's he's like battling the, he's or he's in the, like that, the, you know, the, the swimming with the sharks in that singles arena, if you will. You know? Oh, bless his heart. Oh. And I also heard, like you did, that maybe things aren't going so great. You know what he needs, babe? I think he needs to spend a little time in the love shack. Yeah, the love shack. That, the love shack that airs every Thursday at 1 p.m. PST on KKNW 1150. Come on, Mike. Come on over and join. We got gotcha. you. Upper Left Corner is a PNW true crime podcast now streaming on all major podcast platforms. If you get excited when your favorite true crime podcast tells a story about a place that you've been to or the town that you live in, then Upper Left Corner podcast is for you. Each week, I tell you a story of a crime that has taken place in the PNW and give you background about the town the crime occurred in. If you like true crime, check out Upper Left Corner podcast now available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and more. Ace Hardware is a helpful place with prompt, friendly service, knowledge, and the little things that make a big difference. Service. Selection. Advice. Community involvement. Competitive prices. Convenience. Located near you. And the things you need, such as... House keys. Lawn and garden. Plumbing. Electrical. Hardware. Grills. Outdoor living supplies. And even nuts and bolts. When you visit Ace Hardware, you'll be greeted at the door and given the help you need. So come visit us at Ace Hardware in Evergreen Way in Everett, Lake Stevens, and now Stanley. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, we're uh, back with our whiskey tastings. Yeah. That's what we, we don't really get to hear that, but we're no. trying to get through our first yeah. commercial That's break awesome today. That's awesome when we can hear the music. We got uh, we got to thank Super Lime here cuz he's like you need to eat something. You need to eat something? Like, yeah. I I forgot I didn't need lunch. Is that today, you so need I, your lunch? Yeah. Maybe that's, that's probably why I'm feel yeah, a little you're, you're going to order double at our uh, afterwards restaurant, That's right? right. Okay, here we go. Well, our pick of the day, uh, <laughs> two thumbs down. This is not good whiskey. This is whiskey that I would probably uh, not this, even put in my car if I needed this is alcohol. The stuff, this is the stuff that you save for when you're already drunk and <laughs> you want more. <laughs> or when, you're, or when your uh, ex-friends come on over. All right, yeah, $25 a bottle. Yeah, your ex-buddies. Okay, next week's show, we got a two-hour show. It's going to be packed. We got some segment ideas. 
that we are going to throw to you guys. So it'll either work and you guys will love oh, our second hour or you NFT guys will doodles. not do that. Do you want to show your NFT? We got our NFT that will be posted online to purchase right there. Mike's got it in. It looks like a space Dino there. Or is, the, is that the KKNW logo? I took the KKNW and tried to remember how the Space Needle looks. All right. Well, I am Nathan Mum. (laughs) We got Mike Renee here. David Brown behind the bar there taking care of all of our – well, he's been serving us too. There he is. All all of our information. He's counting down. Thank you. He's going to give us a salute. See you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.